you so much. We're now recording. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining me. And I'm excited for this session on PubMed tips. So I am the liaison librarian to several of our health science areas, and I'm excited to show off one of my favorite databases. The slides link has been given in the chat and it will be made available later as well. So the agenda, basically, what would you like to learn? The session is kind of tips and tricks. So yes, I'm gonna present some of the basics. I also especially noticed that um, I think some of my people who registered have probably used PubMed before. So I'm very interested in sharing tips, not only what I as a librarian um, think is a good idea in terms of PubMed searching, but also you as um, a searcher. I would love to compare notes on those kinds of things. And of course, I'll be covering how to get help as well. So first of all, a Jamboard, and I'll put a link into the chat. Basically, I'm wondering, what would you like to learn about PubMed? Oops. And that should, uh, the link that I put into chat should direct you to a page that looks like this, um, a Jamboard. And Hey, Lisa, the... I'm sorry to interrupt. It's a uh -huh. view only link. Oh, no. I am so sorry. Thanks for doing that, Sam. This is why I love to have somebody running the webinar. Give that link a try, the different one. And thank you so much for letting me know. So, Leah, um, go up to share. Yeah. And then click change it from viewer. Anyone link to uh, edit? Okay. Thank you so much. Haha. Yep. Ha. Now you can post <laughs> using the sticky note on um, this side over here a little bit of information, what you would like to learn about PubMed. I like public polls that are, it gives you something to hang on to and look at. Sometimes easier to do it in chat, but it's just very pretty sometimes to do it in a jam board where you can. All right, and I'm moving your notes around, by the way, as you add them. So please excuse me for doing that. Okay, so I'm seeing best way to catalog searches and results. Okay, yeah, keep keeping track of what you've searched, keeping track of results you found. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and that is very called upon in a lot of the work we do. Open to all information, I love it. <laughs> Quick search tips, does it need and and or? Good point, um, thinking about how to search PubMed. What other search rules are there? Yes, we definitely wanna know how to search PubMed. And I've used it personally for years and have been curious about what I may be missing. I think um, that's a brilliant response too, just because I think it highlights one of the great things about group sessions like this, where we come together, present a little basic information, but then also um, I have slides that have screenshots of the information that I think you should know, but also I think we're gonna be able to share information about PubMed and go off um, on a bit of a tangent as well as called upon. So thank you for those responses. I appreciate it. I'm just gonna stay, well, I shouldn't. I'll go back into view. There we go. <laughs> so what is PubMed? A freely available database, millions of citations to all kinds of, um, mostly articles in biomedicine, preclinical uh, cell and animal studies, as well as healthcare articles, community health, um, all sorts of things in PubMed, and this is me being a health sciences librarian, I just want to make sure that you have this little bit of orientation. Uh, PubMed actually has several parts to it. Uh, the biggest part is called Medline. Those are detailed records for articles. They have subject headings called MeSH terms that describe what the articles are about, health conditions that are covered, populations, settings, substances, um, all sorts of things. And of course, uh, PubMed also has brief records, brief citations to uh, over to PubMed Central 
which is a repository of open access free articles. So PubMed has some a lot of different contents. Those 33 million citations um, cover all kinds of things, but at the heart of it, it's some very detailed records uh, and also some brief records out to free full text. And of course there are UNCG links to full text and we'll look at that as well. And there is this thing called a mesh database, which can be useful. Uh, it's a guide to subject terms that can be used to search for articles in the Medline subset of PubMed. In case you haven't run into this yet, I'm pretty sure everyone has. <laughs> Google does find results from PubMed and PubMed Central. That's one of the ways that I get into PubMed if I'm doing some searching out on the open web looking for all sorts of results. Um, sometimes I'll see a useful looking article record and it will give me a starting point in PubMed. And from there, I'm able to use things like subject headings and filters, uh, similar articles, other nice things about the database to drill down just on that healthcare or environmental health or community health um, content. Getting to PubMed, I do advise, even though PubMed is a freely uh, available, uh, public, publicly searchable database, while you're at UNCG, um, it can be helpful to go through the UNCG library homepage and use a link a link somewhere on the library website. We have them all over the place. Here's one path, um, but follow a path like this and it will give you shortcuts from PubMed abstracts over to UNCG full text and to interlibrary loan service. Don't ever pay for an article while you're at UNCG. You know, sometimes we'll come across a record for something that we like. There'll be a screen that says, you know, pay 30 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever for the article. Don't do that while you're at UNCG, okay? When in doubt, contact the library, but um, we should, in most cases, either have the article or be able to help you get it. So there are search tips that I want to give you, but also I'm wondering if you were talking to someone who was maybe a peer or maybe less experienced in terms of searching, what exactly, um, what kind of tip would you want to give them in terms of searching PubMed? And I hope that link works. If not, I'll post another link <laughs> into the chat. This is the um, next page of the Jamboard. I just used the um, forward arrow kind of at the top of the screen. So if you have ideas on if you've searched PubMed before, if you have ideas on something that you would advise somebody on how to search PubMed, go ahead and post. I like that one. Yep, starting to see some results come in. Use and to narrow searches and combine categories. Yes. I like using that Boolean logic, the um, search commands, and or not. Most databases recognize them. PubMed certainly does. Every database applies them a little differently, and we'll talk about that. But yeah, I love using the and command especially. We've got select key terms, keep broad and be consistent with use. Yes, that is also a really good point. When you're thinking through your research question, it is a good idea to, to select those main terms and be consistent with use. I'm not sure I get um, be consistent with use. As a librarian, sometimes I will, I will go down lots of rabbit holes. I'm definitely trying to be consistent across um, databases. Sometimes I will pick multiple subject sets. I would love to hear more about that as we as we get into the searching. And I see keep searches detailed, but also um, keep them general. You never know when something is sparked. Good point, yeah. I usually will start a list of search terms and then I'll write down maybe some narrower terms that I'm seeing, maybe some more general terms, depending on the results that come up, yep. Look at similar articles feature of relevant sources. Very true. Yeah, y'all are knocking it out of the park. So 
before I go into PubMed, I'll just briefly say, yeah, the um, PubMed is very forgiving about searching. It assumes an and uh, between your search terms. So um, if you're thinking about your entire research question, you can pull out some of your main terms and where normally in some databases you have to type and between different terms, um, PubMed will assume that, that's helpful. And of course, if you can be specific, for instance, maybe low back, type low back pain instead of just back pain, but sometimes you need to scope it a little bit uh, depending on results that you get back. And the National Library of Medicine does have some advice. They say that in this database, avoid quotation marks and the truncation symbol. Um, just so you know, that will sometimes uh, kind of turn off uh, some of the under the hood search features that, that can help get more results. But you can use them, but sometimes they backfire or act in a way that might be a little unexpected. So I'm gonna come over to the library homepage and databases. And I know I'm coming through here really fast. I'll put the link to PubMed in the chat. Oh, no, I won't, I will. Now I'll put link to PubMed in the chat. <laughs> so you know where I'm coming in at. All right, so uh, search screen, perfectly fine to just start typing your topic, no problem. Um, while we're on this page, I just wanna point out there's a really good FAQ and user guide. There is also a quick link to something uh, that I might not necessarily show today, but good to know about uh, MeSH database, the guide to those subject terms. And of course, other things that I don't always look at, trending articles, um, latest literature, there is some really fun stuff down there. All right, so just in chat, does anybody have a search that they'd like me to demonstrate? Maybe a topic that they're interested in? And I definitely have a canned search prepared, but if you'd like me to demonstrate or if you'd like us to talk about how to search on a topic that you suggest, we can do that. And oh, I didn't advise you how to how to respond. Sorry. Um, just um, if you have a search, feel free to type it into chat, or feel free to unmute if you have a topic that you'd like me to demonstrate. Oh, I love it! I hadn't heard that. Okay, Sam, I'm going to be following up with you about your search demos. That's great. Oh, creating morale with cookies. I actually, okay, I like that one very much as well. That's um, a lot more appealing than my search topic, my canned search topic, which was microplastics and human health. I think cookies are more appealing. Okay, so based on some of our search tips uh, that we've talked about, I might type, uh, I don't know, morale, because morale might be creating or boosting or, or something else. Um, so I might type morale and cookies. And does anybody else have, um, I don't know, things that they'd wanna suggest about this search? I can go ahead and hit search, but. So PubMed should have um, searched the terms morale and cookies. Uh, not only in the article descriptions. So if we look at the brief descriptions here, we can see the article titles, we can see the um, journal title and the citation information. By the way, there is a suggested site citation right next to each result these days, which I love. And we'll get a little bit of the abstract if there was one. Um, also the detailed record that we'll look back at in a minute. And in addition to looking for the, both the terms morale and cookies, PubMed will have looked to see if there are subject terms, um, uh, medical subject terms for both morale and cookies and also morale cookies. 
which is sort of fine. I like this toddler's interventions towards fair and unfair individuals. <laughs> the costs of war and cookie dough. So um, looking at results here, I see 13 results. And a lot of times um, the results maybe aren't quite what I want for my initial search. Either there are just a couple or there are way, way too many. So I might say, uh, I know we want to be super specific, but I might search food as a category. I don't want to put in pizza party, but morale and food. We might talk about a setting like uh, morale at work. So it's trying. <laughs> the The default sort is best match. PubMed's working on it. It really is working on this. I'll talk about the filters for just a minute. Um, first, we have this kind of uh, graph for results based on when they were published. And I could move the slider on this if I wanted to quickly limit to most recent articles, but it's also kind of nice to see an overview of when results were picked up. We get the text filters, which these don't have anything to do with UNCG full text. So you, you might not want to use them. And there are other filters such as article type filters uh, so sometimes um, when I'm starting research on a topic, I might want to look at a review article. So I could click review and we see many fewer results now. And of course there are filters for year and other filters that I see that you might not see every day in your PubMed um, because you might not have displayed them or activated them yet, um, age groups. So this is a fun one to have especially if you have a whole, whole lot of results and maybe you only want results that address um, a child population or an adult population, it can be really, really handy. But just so you know, these results are inclusive. So it is it will still allow um, me to see results even if they include multiple age groups. Uh, also, um, this age groups, it's based on uh, some of those subject headings. So if I want to use an age group filter to limit the results, the number of results that I'm seeing, it is only going to be searching uh, the Medline subset of PubMed. It won't include those PubMed records. So just so you know, this can be very handy, uh, this kind of filter for cutting down results, but sometimes it artificially cuts it down a whole lot. Now, if you get into PubMed and you're wondering where are all those filters that Leah showed, and I'm interested in them, but they're not showing up for me. Just click on additional filters and you'll see a lot of others, including you know, language, English, that's very useful. If you select something um, here, you can click show and that just makes it show up on the screen. Then you still have to click the checkbox to apply it and your results will go down and down. So I'm gonna pause for just a minute I'm gonna pause talking just because I wanna give y'all a chance to unmute and ask some questions or make some comments. How are you feeling about this so far in terms of searching PubMed? And feel free to type in chat or unmute and ask, ask a question or make a comment. This may be a silly question, but have you figured out a way of moving those filters? You know? uh, Oh, good question. Like in terms of where they appear on the screen? Yes, yes. Oh, no, no, no. That's an excellent question. So I don't I don't know of a way to do that. It is true that there is a login up here in the um, right hand corner. So this doesn't this doesn't connect to UNCG specifically. Uh, this connects to the NCBI and the NLM. So this is where you can create your individual account um, for this platform or for this system. It is, so maybe. <laughs> well, well that, that makes sense it might be there because otherwise it would be relying on cookies that are not consistent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank oh, you. and you're welcome. Good question. And speaking of cookies, um, 
PubMed, one thing I love about it is it remembers my search history and, you know, the terms I've typed and also um, maybe articles that I've set aside. I haven't demonstrated that yet, but if you want to make a temporary bookmark folder, you can check items and choose send to clipboard. So send to being the button between the results in the search box and clipboards the top choice there. And that adds um, a little item called clipboard. But yeah, I think maybe cookies are used to remember your clipboard for up to eight hours and also your search history. Um, because it's for this computer. If I were to go to another computer or um, hang out for 10 hours and not click around, uh, that stuff would be lost unless I created that individual account with the NLM and logged into it. Then I could save my search history, create a search alert, probably adjust my filters some even more. Um, are there any other questions or comments? So I'm going to uh, keep trucking along. And one thing, well, I am going to, OK. I just can't help it. I have to. <laughs> I'm searching morale and pizza party. I'm adjusting the search a little bit. I definitely think pizza party should come with cookies, but we'll see. So you can keep uh, typing terms in here. As a librarian, one of the tips that I give is to, um, well, <laughs> remember filters that you've set. Ah, sad. I heard, I heard, I'd heard so many uh, informal things about food and morale and this and that. Um, so I'm not finding as much of it in here, but I will say it is good to workshop your topic a little bit in terms that come up. And um, wondering just what put my has on. I'm just going to type something broad so we get a big pile of results. <laughs> So um, other things that we might want to know about or might want to do is click into the abstract view of a record. And here it becomes, uh, we get a lot of information. So it becomes obvious that PubMed has put a little tag or a label on this. This is a commentary article. You'll probably also notice that there are articles that have randomized controlled trial that have labels like review and so on and so forth. Not every article record has that kind of tag, but um, they do appear on some of them. And these can connect to filters. So there are lots of article types you can limit to. Over on the right-hand side, you'll notice full text links. So there's always going to be a publisher link. Whether or not the publisher recognizes that you're affiliated with UNCG or not. Uh, so don't Again, just to reemphasize, do not ever put your, um, you know, hard-earned cash towards buying articles while you're at UNCG. If you use a library link to get into PubMed, you should see a UNCG logo here, and you can click on it to go out to our link resolver, which will search all of our full text subscriptions. And if we have this article online, you'll see view full text. If we don't you should see at the bottom of this page an interlibrary loan shortcut. And there often can be much more, um, much more information in the abstract view of the article. There are navigation links down the left-hand side, by the way, but we can see this uh, is a commentary on, and there's a link to the other article record, the earlier one. PubMed does use an algorithm to find articles similar to this, and sometimes those can be very handy. And some records, as I mentioned before, the ones that are indexed for Medline have mesh terms. So I'll click on mesh terms to come down. And this is one of the places I like to come to look for uh, terms on my topic. If I have results that are at least in the neighborhood of what I'm interested in, these mesh terms can be helpful in terms of finding other similar articles. So for instance, I can click on diabetes mellitus drug therapy 
and I get choices. What do I want to do? Do I want to immediately search for articles on this topic in PubMed? Do I want to go over to the guide to subject headings so that I can browse around and explore this topic? Or do I want to um, start setting up a search? In other words, don't immediately launch the search, just start setting it up. I'm going to go ahead and click search in PubMed. And we see um, now my search is very different. My results are different. These are going to be articles that have a strong focus on drug therapy for diabetes. And it did remember my filters there. So other things that I think are useful to know about the advanced search page. So two things here, the, the, the query builder up here at the top, you can search within fields if you would like. I don't typically do this as a rule. Um, it's not, I will usually do keyword searching um, on the basic search page for any part of a record. Um, and I'll do searching with subject terms, but you might want to search just in the titles of everything in PubMed. So you could type a term, click add, and it will start setting up your search um, in the query box. Then you click search and it will go over and search those article records. Something else that is really useful for some people is having a search history. So things that, um, things that you've typed, filters that you have set, numbers of results. So you can download this and save it, or um, during the session, you can click to uh, basically rerun the search. So I'm gonna pause again and ask, uh, does anybody have questions or suggestions, thoughts about this part of it? I was curious, the uh, search history, if you go back, does it go back to the filters you had at the time? Good question. It's not supposed to. So right now, let's so see. If you went down to morale food, mm -hmm. yep. it, it should limit the five years still, which I don't think you had on at that time. Yeah. Let me, let me see. It should reapply the filters that were active at that time, but we'll see. We'll see. Morale work food and the search history didn't have any filters and it re realized that. So yeah, it didn't set, didn't right, set. Excellent. Them. Thank you. You're welcome. And there are definitely some kinds of projects uh, where you would want kind of a date stamped list of these are the searches that I ran. These are the numbers of results that I had. It's not an everyday thing, but good to have that. All right. So I'm seeing a chat. Uh, definitely, yes, in case people have to head out. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Sam's going to send out the recording. And the next webinar in this series is Non-Traditional Library Spaces, March 20th, 12 p.m. by Rachel Olson. So I'm just going to run back over to my slides. And flipping through a lot, <laughs> a lot of slides to how to get help. My contact information is here. And definitely please feel free to contact me if you have questions from this presentation. If um, you're interested in research help on a project that you're working on, there's a link so that you can find your liaison librarian. And I'd like to acknowledge that these slides are based on Introduction to PubMed slides from the National Library of Medicine, and you are very much encouraged to use and adapt them as needed. All right, I am here to take any final questions, and I also want to respect your time as well. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay. Well, people are saying thank you. Great new info. Um, we have a couple of, you know, we can stay. If people have questions, don't feel, don't feel like you can't ask questions. Um, I did put the links to the future stuff. Um, 
the webinars, um, a short assessment, the slides again. I guess I didn't put a link to where you can sign up for the webinars. Let me do that. Be really link heavy here. Um, but yeah, does anyone have any questions? No question, but now that I've found out where to sign up for these, I don't know how I found this when I stumbled across it when I was drifting around. You know, I'll probably be back for future ones. Thank you. Great. Yes. Um, we like that. All, that link I sent you also has recording, so you can see other stuff we've done this semester and prior semesters too. And if you have any suggestions for upcoming webinars, you can let us know in that assessment or you can email me directly. Um, okay, well, I'm going to take the silence as you just did great, Leah, and people <laughs> have no questions for now and know to contact you if they have questions. So thank you, Leah. Thank you, everyone, for coming um, on spring break. Again, PubMed, that shows you the, the power of PubMed, I think, and Leah. So um, thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your week. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank thanks, you. Leah. Have a good day. Bye, y'all.